Welcome back. Welcome to Tai Chi for Flexibility and Balance. It's part of our 2023 Village and Howard Spring Tai Chi series. I'm Fran Dummett, who's hosting, and will be listening to and experiencing the sessions of Dr. Adam Potts, physical therapist. <clears throat> I'm part of a nonprofit organization called the Village in Howard, for it takes a village <clears throat> to help older adults stay in their homes, live independently, and remain connected to their community. And that's what we're doing by giving many different uh, activities and events that we like to share with our group. So balance is not something you find, it's something you create. So let's begin doing that today. How many of you here have balance or flexibility issues? And what are they of? What are they of? Today, what we'll be doing is exploring about flexibility and balance and having, as I said, the session by Dr. Adam Potts. We'll hear a little relaxing music. Again, for the Ayanadi sound by Dalal. I'm going to show you the quick and dirty one I do, nine minute flexibility recommendation. And next week we will be exploring Tai Chi for health. So maybe some causes of balance are if you have diabetes, heart disease or stroke, vision problems, thyroid, nerves, or concerns with your blood vessels. And some of those diseases that might cause mobility issues could be amputation, paralysis, perhaps cerebral palsy, as I said, stroke, multiple sclerosis or multiple dystrophy, arthritis, or spinal cord injury. And, and why do we have this declining flexibility? could be from loss of water in your tissues and spine, which increase stiffness in your joints. Can be from an injury. Could be from loss of elasticity through muscle tendons and surrounding tissues. Maybe at our age, inactivity or lack of stretching. So these could be some of the many causes we lose our flexibility. And of course, as we get older, the amount of lubricating fluid inside our joints decrease, therefore making the cartilage becoming thinner and your ligaments, check out your ligaments, shorten and they lose their flexibility. And for me, even though I know I'm losing my flexibility, I wanted to know why these things are occurring. So this helps me understand a little bit and just kind of check out that chart and picture on the right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what are the factors that affect mobility? Of course, your age, your joint structure, your muscle mass, skeletal structure, and your gender. So why do we have some of these balance problems? It could be for sure muscle weakness at our age, unstable joints, mm, perhaps side effects of medications or ear infections, head or in injuries, and anything affecting the inner ear or brain. Many of us have balance problems because that inner ear, those rocks in there. Low blood pressure or untreated vitamin B12 deficiency. I didn't know that one until I read that. And why, 
Do the elderly lose the ability to walk? Do you ever notice that as we're getting older? Well, older age, obviously, lower physical activity, obesity, and impaired strength and balance. Perhaps also those, of course, chronic diseases like diabetes or arthritis. So, whoops, that's gone. Can you regain flexibility after 7D? Absolutely, yes. So let's see. Think about what you're doing now to help your issues. What are you doing to help your balance? And let's see what some of the experts say. Are you paying attention to your body? You know that it's not working as well as you want. Okay, make sure you maintain good posture and stretch and strengthen those muscles. Hmm, good luck sitting on the floor. Uh, include your flexibility training in your workout. Don't wait for a workout to work on your flexibility, but spend a few minutes each day just doing some stretching. And that, trust me, will help. And probably of all the different sessions that I've been doing with Dr. Potts, this one for me has helped the most my issues. And I love, love this one. So let's begin our time by centering yourself and just breathing in and out. <sighs> Relaxing and releasing those shoulders away from your ears, unclenching that jaw and dropping your tongue from the roof of your mouth. Let's see if we can work on our flexibility and balance with Dr. Adam Potts. Welcome to Tai Chi for flexibility. My name's Adam, I'm a physical therapist and Tai Chi instructor. And today we're gonna to do a Tai Chi and yoga flow where we blend the graceful and flowing movements of Tai Chi and Qigong with the flexibility and mindfulness aspect of yoga. So make sure you watch the video all the way to the end because I'm going to explain the difference in the similarities between Tai Chi and yoga and how we can blend them into one seamless flow. All right, so with this class, you don't have to get it perfect. You don't have to get anything memorized or get it right. Just follow along and just do what you see. I'll be your mirror image, but if you go one way and I go the other, I promise I won't get mad. And then I also cue the breathing, but if the breathing part stresses you out, you can just breathe normal. You can do this whole routine sitting in a chair, standing, or you can alternate sitting and standing as needed. We'll do the whole sequence standing. We'll add in some gentle standing yoga postures to further increase flexibility of body and mind. So without further ado, find a place where you can do some mindful movement. All right, so if you're standing, we'll begin with the feet together or as close as you can. The hands can come to the lower abdomen. You can close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze. As you breathe in, the belly expands. And as you breathe out, the belly returns towards the spine, abdominal breathing. Breathing in, coming into the present moment. Breathing out, just letting go. Breathing in, arriving in the body. Breathing out. One more time. This time you can hold the breath at the top of the inhale, just for a moment. And then let it out with a big sigh. Just letting out tension and stress. The hands can float down by the sides. As you breathe in, the arms float up. They circle in front as if you're gathering an energy. Bring it into the heart. Send it down through the body and into the earth. Sinking the chi. The life force energy in yoga, we call it the prana. The source of our power and vitality. This time the arms come all the way up and over, just as much as you can. Then the hands come together prayer position down to the heart. And the hands float back up. They drift out and down, nice and easy, nice and slow. Call this one Anjali Mudra, or prayer position. The hands come together, heart center. The hands come up. They float all the way out and down, feeling all the sensations on the way down. And then from here, step one foot out to the side, either foot. Then the arms float up in front, just about shoulder height. The arms get heavy floating down. You can even soften the hips and knees if you want. We call this opening the door, start of the journey. 
Breathing in like mist rising from the lake. Breathing out floating down like a soft rain. One more time, opening the door. This time the arms circle around in front making two loose fists. The forearms come towards each other as you round the back. Then breathe in as you open. The arms go out to the sides, opening the shoulders and chest. Breathe out as you round the back. Forearms come towards each other. Breathe in and open. We call this one spinal cord breathing. Stimulating the energy along the spine, loosening up the joints as well, opening up the shoulder and chest. All right, let's do one more. This time the arms drift out to the sides. They float down, the palms face up. They rise up the midline. Then when you get to the heart, one hand pushes up, the other pushes down, connecting above and below. Then the hands spiral back to the heart, switching sides, pushing high and pushing low. Now you can keep your spine neutral, or if you want, you can do a little side bend opening up the side body one more time. Other side. This time the bottom hand comes up and will push right off into the corner. The other hand pushes in the opposite direction. Breathing in, coming back to center. We'll go to the other corner. The dragon spreads its wings. If you want, you can even turn a little more, but just staying in your comfort zone. Never forcing it, always easing in. One more time, the dragon spreads its wings. And then hug the tree, bring it right out in front, rounding out the arms. The arms open up wide. The fingertips drift towards each other, the hands float down, they press behind. And then the hands come out in front as you sit down into your chair. Coming back up, the hands float down, pressing behind. Do that again. I like to ease in and out a few times for this one. The Utkatasana, the chair pose. One more time. This time, let's hold for a breath or two, if you want. You can always keep your hands at prayer position for any of these movements as well. Just feeling, just noticing how it feels. Then the hands can float down as you rise up. The arms circle in front as you hug the big tree, once again. The arms open up wide, then this hand scoops under, step in, as you catch the moon. Then the top hand goes behind the back, will step out to the side. As you step out, the bottom hand tosses the moon. Circle it back around, toss away, as if you could toss the moon. Then the other hand comes back on top, catch the moon. The bottom hand tosses away, the other hand just pushes down, parting the wild horse's mane. Let's do that one again. Breathing, feeling, and as always, don't worry about getting it perfect. As long as you're moving, I'm happy. All right, this time, stay with me here. The back foot here is gonna step back. We'll catch the moon again, but this time as we toss away, the palms rotate to face down. One arm reaches forward, the other behind, coming into warrior two. Our Virabhadrasana, softening the shoulders, letting go of any tension you don't need. You can always soften the arms as needed, too. I won't get mad. One more breath, a proud warrior. And then step the back foot up. This hand drags across the horizon. Step in. The other hand scoops under as you catch the moon. The top hand goes behind the back. We'll step out to the other side. And as you step out, toss the moon. Circle it back around. Let's do that one again. This time the other hand comes back on top. Catch the moon, and toss it away. The other hand stays behind, parting the wild horse's mane, creating tranquility out of chaos. Let's do one more. Then this time, stay with me here. The back foot steps back just a little bit to give you a little more stability. Then as you toss away, the palms rotate to face down. One arm reaches forward, one behind, rooting down through the feet into the earth, tall through the spine, shoulders soft, fingertips reaching out. Warrior two. And then from here, step the back foot in. Then we'll hug the tree, bring it right back into the center. 
the arms open up wide. Then this hand here drops down and let it drift over to the other side. The hands switch positions. The hands float across like clouds in the sky. The hands switch again. Cloudy hands. You can breathe in as they switch, breathe out as they drift, or take as many breaths as you need. As long as you're breathing, it's my only rule. Like a moving meditation. All right, let's do one more. This time the top hand makes a hook. The bottom hand comes up, then the bottom hand floats across the horizon, the palm turns out, shoulders sink. Let's circle it around one more time. Do just the arms at first. Now this time, you can step the foot in as well. And then step out to the side, the hand drifts across, palm turns out, single whip. Let's do that one again, breathing in, Breathing out. Once again, you can always soften the hook arm. We'll do one more time, single whip. This time, stay with me here. The back foot steps back, the palms face up, the front leg can straighten, and then reaching across, easing into the hip, coming up. I like to go in and out of this one a few times as well, kind of testing out the water, Finding your edge, where any more is too much, but any less is not quite there. And then you can rotate one hand down, the other hand can reach up, or you can always stay in half prayer position in your triangle pose, or anywhere in between. Whatever feels good for you. Sometimes I just let my arm dangle behind it. Just experimenting, and then rotating back up. And it doesn't matter how low you go, by the way. The, back, the front leg bends, the back foot steps up, then this hand floats down as the hands become clouds once again. Drifting across. I'll do a few more. Letting go of any tension you don't need. Softening. How much can you let go? One more time. This time, the top hand makes a hook. The bottom hand comes up. The bottom hand floats across. Palm turns out. One more time with just the arms. This time you can step in as the hand comes up and then step out to the side, single whip. The hand floats across, palm turns out. Circle it back around. Feeling into the body, feeling all the sensations that you can. You don't wanna miss a thing. All right, let's do one more. Single whip. And then from here, the back foot steps back, the palms face up, the front leg can straighten, or you can keep a slight bend, reaching across, keeping the spine nice and long. Ah, breathing. And then this time, if you want, you can rotate one hand down, the other hand can rotate up, coming into triangle pose, opening up the side body, and you can always come up high too. It's definitely not a contest at all. It's feeling your edge. So right about there. Once again, you can always stay in half prayer position. Just being kind to yourself, please. Then rotating back up, arms reach out, the front leg bends, the back foot steps in, then the back hand drops down as the hands become clouds. And with each passing of the clouds, the feet can get a little closer just until you get to a comfortable position. Wave hands like clouds. Like white fluffy clouds drifting across the bright blue sky. Right, let's do one more. This time the bottom hand comes up into a hook. The other hand scoops under as we carry the firefly in the lantern. Then the hands switch again. The other hand makes a hook, scooping under, drifting side to side, breathing, feeling into the body, letting go of striving, judgment. Can you be here now? One more time. 
the firefly and the lantern. And then hug the tree, bring it back to center, the arms open up wide, and the hands begin to float down, palms face up, one hand right on top of the other. Then this hand here floats up, comes right on over down the midline of the body. Then the other side, breathing in, breathing out. We call this one centering, creating mental focus and clarity. Breathing in, breathing out. One more time. Good one to do on a stressful day. And then both hands together float out to the sides. They drift all the way up and over. And the palms float down to the waist as you soften the hips and knees. Then circle the hands in front as if you had a big ball right in front of the body, scooping under, back up to the heart, down, all the way up and over, down to the waist. This time we'll make a diamond shape with the hands right in front of the heart and then press out called opening the heart. The hands float down, let's do that again. Breathing in as you rise up. Breathing out as you melt down. Circling the ball, gathering in the energy to turn into loving kindness and self-compassion. Floating down, last one, all the way up and over. Down to the waist. This time we'll make the diamond shape again, right in front of the heart, and then press out, reaching, connecting, sending out all your loving kindness out to the world. May all beings be free from suffering. May they be happy. May they be healthy. May they live with ease. Then turning your palms to face yourself, the hands come to the heart. May I be kind to myself. May I feel connected with all beings. May I love myself just as I am. Then the hands can float down to the lower abdomen. You can step your feet together or as close as you can. And then you can close your eyes or just keep a soft gaze and let your body rock and sway ever so slightly, bamboo in the wind. Feeling into the body, all the sensations. And noticing your breath. Noticing the inflow and the outflow without trying to control it in any way. And then you can bring your attention into your heart, expressing gratitude to yourself being here today to cultivate a flexible body, a balanced mind, and a compassionate heart. And then if your eyes were closed, you can slowly open them, letting in the light. The hands can come together in front of the heart, and we can finish with a bow. Thank you all so much for joining me for this Tai Chi and Yoga Flow. Welcome to Tai If you would like to continue the tape, go to his website and link, and you can see how those uh, positions and what they mean. Right now, we're just going to have a couple of minutes of relaxation.
So on your list, I also have this flexibility and balance for beginners, which is a nine minute one that you can watch. Just look at that URL at YouTube. Okay. And what I have done, if you email me at frandummit at gmail.com, I have a sheet that gives the directions so you can put it in front of you anywhere, any place, and just do it if you didn't want to listen. These exercises, if you do them daily, maybe in the morning or if you like it at night or both or three times a week, just incredibly increase your balance and flexibility. So be aware, there is no such thing as a life balance. It is all life. The balance has to be within you. So let's slowly reawaken our body, feeling our mind and body becoming more awake and alert. Move your arms, your legs, and stretch your muscles to let them awaken. If you want to sit for a moment with your eyes open, observing that room around you. And when you're ready, return to your usual activities, keeping with you a sense of calm and relief. So thanks for this Tai Chi for flexibility and balance. Next week is Tai Chi for health. Namaste. See you next time. Thank you.